Welcome to the MOOCs course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chemicals from C3 Compounds. In this lecture, uh, we discuss production of different types of chemicals from uh, C3 compounds. Under the C3 compounds, we have taken propylene because uh, in the previous chapter, we have discussed when we do the steam cracking of hydrocarbons to produce ethylene and ethylene, not only ethylene and ethylene, propylene, butylene, propane, butane, etc. So many other compounds are also produced. And then we realize that this propylene uh, is produced at least at uh, 50 percent rate at which the ethylene is produced. So, that much large quantities it is being produced. And then also from the application point of view, after the ethylene, propylene is the most important olefin that can be utilized to produce different types of uh, chemicals, right. Because of such reasons, under the C3 compounds, we consider propylene and then try to produce different types of chemicals. Before getting into the details of productions of different types of chemicals, we see the spectrum of products one can produce from this uh, propylene, okay. Propylene, it is only slightly less important than ethylene from the applications point of view or from the end use applications point of view, how it can be utilized to produce different types of intermediate chemicals and then end chemicals, etc. On such basis, if you compare, it is only slightly less important than the ethylene because ethylene we have discussed in the previous chapter that it is the most important olefin from its applications point of view. So, after the ethylene, propylene is such highly important uh, olefin, okay. We have also seen in the previous lecture that ethylene can be produced from the fermentation alcohol as well, right. So, but however, uh, majority of the uh, ethylene is being nowadays produced uh, from the uh, hydrocarbons, steam cracking of the hydrocarbons, right. So, uh, what I mean to say that though you have a secondary source for the production of uh, ethylene that is fermentation alcohol, um, but in the case of propylene, only source of uh, production of propylene is the steam cracking of hydrocarbons. That is propylene must be obtained from petroleum resources only, it cannot be produced from other sources. Refinery process which produce uh, propylene are listed below, steam cracking of hydrocarbons, direct pyrolysis of propane and then refinery of gases, right. So, uh, this uh, method uh, we have already seen in the previous chapter when we were discussing about uh, production of uh, chemicals from C1 and C2 chemicals under which when we were, when we discussed uh, production of uh, C2 chemicals, right. First we have uh, produced C2 compounds from the uh, hydrocarbons by steam cracking, then we produce different types of uh, chemicals from such uh, C2 compounds like ethylene and ethylene. In such process, we have also seen that uh, propylene uh, is being produced at least uh, at uh, 50 percent rate compared to that of ethylene. So, whatever the rate or whatever the mass rate or volumetric uh, rate of ethylene that has been produced in the steam cracking of hydrocarbons, uh, at least 50 percent of that uh, rate, you know, uh, at that rate, you know, propylene is being produced, such large quantities it is being produced, that is what it means to say, right. So, not only from the uh, production rate point of view, but also from the applications point of view, propylene is uh, very much essential, right. So, that we can see in this chart. Now, if you see this consumption pattern of propylene, you can understand how much important it is that you can uh, utilize to produce different types of intermediates and then end chemicals. So, from the propylene you can produce intermediates like methanol, acetaldehyde, propylene tetramer, cumin, isopropanol, propylene oxide, perchloroethylene, carbon tetrachloride, acrylonitriles, allyl chlorides, isoprene, etc. This uh, you can see. And then using methanol, what kind of chemicals uh, we can produce that we have already discussed in the previous chapter. We have also discussed once you have the acetaldehyde, we can produce uh, vinyl acetate, chloral, butyraldehyde, cellulose acetate, fibers, etc. Those things we have seen. Propylene tetramer can be used for the dodecal benzene production. Cumin, initially it was produced uh, as a blending for uh, high octane uh, fuels, 
but uh, nowadays it is primarily utilized to uh, produce phenol. In the production of phenol from the cumin, acetone is also uh, obtained as co-product. Isopropanol is primarily used to produce acetone by dehydrogenation of isopropanol you can get the acetone and then you know acetone is how much important as solvent. Nowadays acetone is also used uh, for the acetone based chemical so many as mentioned here. Right? Isopropanol is also used as solvent uh, uh, for different applications. Isopropanol is also utilized to produce hydrogen peroxide, glycerol, etc. that we are going to see. Propylene oxides can be used for uh, production of polyethers, foams like polyurethanes, etc. Right? Whereas, allyl chloride can be used to produce intermediate like epichlorhydrin from which you can also get the synthetic glycerol. Isoprene you can utilize to get polyisoprenes which is used uh, for the synthetic rubber products. Now you can see so many number of products are there, we have listed only few. So from the applications point of view it is very much important after the ethylene within the olefins category. Okay? In this lecture we are going to discuss uh, the production of uh, glycerol by two different ways right? and then we discuss production of uh, isopropanol and from isopropanol production of uh, acetone we will discuss and then production of cumin we will be discussing. So, production of these four uh, chemicals that is synthetic glycerol, isopropyl alcohol, acetone and then cumin would be covered in this particular lecture. Synthetic glycerin from propylene via allyl chloride. So, glycerin or glycerol production we are discussing now. Actually we have uh, seen in the natural product industries uh, what we have done, we have taken the fat and then we have done the uh, fat splitting reaction using the high temperature high pressure water so that what you get fatty acids and then dilute glycerin you can get. Right? So, this is what we have discussed uh, in the oils and fats industries followed by the soaps and detergents industries. So, these fatty acids you can purify and then get as a product or further utilize to produce soaps. This dilute glycerin you can do the purification and then get a pure natural glycerol. Okay? So, the glycerin can also be obtained by uh, synthetic methods using propylene. So, glycerin can be produced by synthetic methods using propylene. So, there are two approaches are there, the first one is the via allyl chloride that we discuss first. As per below reaction, this process produces intermediate epichlorhydrin which is basic ingredient for uh, epoxy resins manufacture. So, where propylene reacts with the chlorine at 400 to 500 degree centigrade to give allyl chloride plus HCl. This allyl chloride would further react with HOCl to give glycerol dichlorhydrin which is this component and this glycerol dichlorhydrin will further react with calcium hydroxide to give epichlorhydrin which is an intermediate and can be used as an ingredient for production of different types of epoxy resins. So, this epichlorhydrin can further react with sodium hydroxide and water to produce glycerol right so this is the process okay this is one synthetic process another synthetic process to get the glycerol from propylene is via acrolein right here propylene reacts with water to give isopropanol in fact uh, this isopropanol production we are going to discuss with flowchart in this lecture itself this isopropanol would be oxidized at 120 degree centigrade and 2 atmospheres to give acetone plus hydrogen peroxide. Okay? Then propylene also gets oxidized at 350 degree centigrade at 1 to 10 atmosphere by using uh, Cu2O catalyst to get acrolein plus water. Right? This acrolein will react with isopropanol, acrolein 
reacting with isopropanol to give allyl alcohol. This reaction required 400 degree centigrade and then catalyst like magnesium oxide and zinc oxide or mixture of both. This reaction also produces acetone co-product. Now this allyl alcohol would be reacting with the hydrogen peroxide that is produced here using WO3 catalyst at 60 to 70 degree centigrade to produce glycerol. So, out of these 5 reactions, these 3 reactions are vapor phase reactions whereas the remaining are liquid phase reactions. Overall yield of glycerol from propylene is approximately 50 to 60 percent. This process also produces acetone as co-product along with acrolein, allyl alcohol and hydrogen peroxide as intermediates. Right? So, this is the second approach to get uh, synthetic glycerol using propylene. Okay? Natural versus synthetic uh, product glycerin if you see, in India majorly natural product glycerin is being produced. Soap plants have such small capacity that central fat splitting plants have been suggested wherein glycerin can be recovered economically via large capacity throughput and then fatty acids ship to small soap manufacturing units. However, synthetic glycerin may be produced successfully by promotion of petrochemical industries where propylene can be utilized to get a glycerol as per the process just discussed. Further substitution of soap by detergents shall further curtail natural glycerol supplies because of this substitution, net results will be stabilized glycerin from both sources, natural as well as the you know synthetic uh, sources. Okay? So, because this uh, glycerol can be attractive raw material for production of different types of specialty uh, chemicals such as plastics, etc. Now, we discuss production of isopropanol. Before going into the production details, we have a pertinent properties of isopropanol here. Molecular weight 60.1, melting point minus 89.5 degree centigrade, boiling point 82.5 degree centigrade, density at 20 degree centigrade is 0 0.789 gram per cc, flash point is 11.6 degree centigrade, ignition temperature is 400 degree centigrade, explosive limits in air is 2 to 12 volume percent, toxic limit concentration is 200 to 400 ppm. It is miscible with water, alcohols and ether. Purity 99 percent absolute grade is there and then 91 uh, percent technical grade is there. So, these are uh, volume percent. If you measure in terms of weight percent, 88 percent uh, weight percent is equal to 91 percent by volume which is a technical grade. Consumption pattern isopropanol is majorly used as intermediate for a production of acetone. So, production of acetone also we are going to discuss. Methods of production of isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol, two methods are there. One is the direct catalytic hydration of propylene, another one is hydration of propylene via sulfation and hydrolysis. So, we are going to discuss this process. First, we do the sulfation of propylene and then whatever the uh, compounds the intermediates form will be doing the hydrolysis of such compounds to get uh, isopropyl alcohol. Chemical reactions, first sulfation reaction of uh, propylene with uh, H2SO4 to get uh, isopropyl acid sulphate. This isopropyl acid sulphate would be reacting with water to undergo hydrolysis reaction to produce isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol and then H2SO4 is released. Side reaction, ether formation may take place here where diisopropyl sulphate whatever is there that would be reacting with water to give diisopropyl ethers plus H2SO4. So, ether may be sometimes is taken as a product if it is required otherwise the process would be carried out such a way that ether production would be as much less as possible. Okay? Quantitative requirements, basis 1 ton of isopropanol that is 88 weight percent purity with 95 percent yield, 
propylene is required 0 0.680 tons, sulfuric acid of 70 percent or 70 to 80 percent concentration 11 kgs, sodium hydroxide is required for the uh, neutralization of the products after the sulfation reaction which is uh, required at 80 kgs to produce 1 ton of uh, isopropanol. Byproducts isopropyl ethers or polymers are uh, produced, ethers is an optional one, so uh, process conditions you can tune so, so that this uh, isopropyl ethers production may be negligible. Plant capacity 50 to 200 tons per day. Now, we have a flow chart here to uh, discuss the production of isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol, right. So, here what we do, whatever the propylene is there that is mixed with other uh, C2, C3 compounds, then compressed and then sent to a reactor or absorber packed bed absorber or sieve tray absorber to which 70 to 80 percent or 70 to 75 percent H2SO4 is supplied from the top. So, here the absorption of gases in H2SO4 takes place. So, their sulfation reaction takes place. This reaction is a you know exothermic reaction. So, that in order to control the temperature of the reaction, refrigerated brine is supplied to the exterior of the reactor. So, while this absorption is taking place, where sulfation reaction also taking place, the light ends are being released from the top. Whereas, the products you take to steam stripper where uh, water is being supplied to recover weak H2SO4 from the product mixture and then that can be taken to a uh, H2SO4 plant for the concentration purpose, so that it can be reused, right. Then after the uh, steam stripping of the products, then mixture is taken to the caustic wash so that to check if at all still traces of H2SO4 are there in the product, they will be washed out with the caustic, right? And then whatever the uh, caustic is there that you can or depleted caustic is there that you can take to the storage uh, after uh, uh, recovering or purifying it. If you cannot uh, recover purify it, then you can take it as a bleed stream and then you have to add new makeup caustic, okay. After caustic wash, the products are passed through a partial condenser where olefins and non-condensable olefins like propylene, etc., whatever are there, they will be water washed and then recycled back to the reactor along with the refinery C2, C3 gases so that further conversion of this propylene can take place, right. Whereas, uh, uh, from the bottom of partial condenser, uh, whatever the liquid solution that you get that would be rich in the alcohols and ether, that would be taken to the ether column. Ether column, you know, you operate such a way that, you know, uh, most of the isopropyl ethers are, uh, you know, going as top products and they will be partially condensed. Then whatever the partially condensed solution is there that would be taken to a decanter in which two layers would be forming, lighter isopropyl ether layer would be forming at the top that would be taken as a product or can be mixed with the uh, refinery gases and propylene and then send it back to the reactor if you do not want it as a product, okay. Whereas the uh, lower portion of the decanter is primarily having alcohols and then water uh, etc. So, that would be sent back to the ether column, right. So, from the bottom of the ether column primarily you will be having IPA, isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol plus some heavy ends plus water etc. would be there. So, here you can call this IPA as crude one. So, this you can take to a IPA column where you do the uh, fractionation and then conditions you maintain such a way that most of the IPA or isopropyl alcohol goes as the top product and then uh, you can condense it, partially condense it and then some of it you can reflex back if the concentration is not up to 87 to 88 percent. When the concentration of IPA in the top column becomes approximately 87 to 88 percent that you can completely condense and then take it as a product. 
whereas the bottom of IPA column would be having water and then heavy ends as impurities that you can collect separately. If you are happy with this 87 to 88 percent uh, IPA as a product that is okay, otherwise if you want like you know 99 percent absolute grade isopropanol what you have to do? You have to take it to the azeotropic uh, distillation column and do the azeotropic distillation so that to get most of the isopropanol as a, a bottom which is having 99 percent uh, IPA, right? So, bottom product would be 99 percent isopropyl alcohol whereas the top one would be the isopropyl ether that would be recycled back to the azeotropic column as a azeotropic agent, right? So, this is the flow chart for the production of uh, both 87 percent isopropanol as well as the 99 percent isopropanol as well as the isopropyl ether byproduct or co-product. Process description propylene mixed with other C2, C3 hydrocarbons, then this mixture is absorbed in 70 to 75 percent H2SO4. This absorption done either in packed or sieve tray absorption tower or in a series of agitated reactors operated at 20 to 25 atmospheres. Strongly exothermic sulfation reaction is maintained at 20 to 30 degree centigrade by refrigerated uh, brine circulation. Solution is hydrolyzed in a steam stripper which removes organic phase as vapor. Weak acid bottoms are neutralized with caustic solution and then sent to H2SO4 concentration plant. Product vapor is fractionally condensed with non-condensable olefin fraction returned to the sulfation step. Crude isopropanol is distilled to remove more volatile isopropyl ether. Portion of reflux is shunted to a decanter where the ether rich top layer is pumped back to sulfation step or dried for product sales purpose. Water alcohol bottom layer of uh, decanter is returned to the reflux column feed. Ether column bottoms are pumped to isopropanol column where an 87 percent isopropanol isotrope is taken off the top. This can be sold as product or sent to a ternary azeotropic distillation column where isopropyl ether removes the water as overhead and then bottoms are 99 percent absolute isopropanol. Coming to the major engineering problems of the process, obviously two steps are important that is sulfation reaction and then direct hydration reaction, okay. Sulfation reaction, ethylene in the feed gas is not absorbed at low temperature and acid concentration that are being used in this process. This eliminates a prior fractionation requirement of light ends since it is not being absorbed, so you do not need to worry about the fractionation of this one and then you can uh, let it be in the mixture as well. Absorption of propylene depends on keeping H2SO4 concentration between 70 to 80 percent. If C4 or higher olefins are present in the feed, these will show up in the bottoms from isopropanol column as they are more readily absorbed and come through the system. Coming to the direct hydration reaction, hydration of propylene is not easy and lots of research went through for the same. Actually, this is the other process. If you wanted to get the isopropanol, you can do two steps. First you do the sulfation reaction and uh, whatever the uh, sulphates formed, you do the hydrolysis of such sulphates to get the isopropanol, right? Other option is that you do the direct hydration of propylene to get the uh, isopropanol, but this process is not easy and lots of research has been carried out. Higher temperature and then higher acid catalyst and vapor phase can cause much polymerization of uh, uh, propylene which is not desirable in production of isopropanol. However, nowadays a catalytic process operates where propylene and water are preheated and passed over tungsten oxide catalyst with metal oxide promoters at 250 to 300 degree centigrade and 250 atmospheres to get the required uh, hydration of a uh, propylene to take place. However, in this process both liquid and vapor phases are present, so design of a uh, reactor would be unusual, a bit difficult. If it is pure uh, liquid phase reaction or pure vapor phase reaction, design of corresponding reactors would be easy and comfortable, but if it is uh, uh, both liquid and vapor phase reaction both are there, so then design of reactor is a uh, slightly difficult task. 
So, this is all about uh, isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol manufacturing industrially. Now, we discuss production of acetone from this isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol. So, acetone before going into the production of acetone from the isopropanol, we see the pertinent properties of acetone. Molecular weight 58.08, melting point minus 95.1 degree centigrade, boiling point 56.5 degree centigrade, density at 20 degree centigrade is 0 0.79, flash point minus 23 degree centigrade, ignition temperature 592 degree centigrade, explosive limits lower and upper limits are 2.2 and 13 percent respectively, toxic limit is 500 ppm. Solubility, it is soluble in water, alcohol and ethyl ethers. Consumption pattern, if you see primarily acetone is used as a solvent, but however, nowadays it is also being used for acetone derived chemicals production as well. Methods of production, catalytic dehydrogenation of a isopropanol, whatever isopropanol production that we have seen just now, that isopropanol if you do. Uh, dehydrogenation then simply you can get the acetone, but it requires catalyst. Other process as I already mentioned the cumin is nowadays used for the production of phenol. So, when you do the uh, production of phenol from cumin then acetone is obtained as co-product. Then co-product of glycerin hydrogen peroxide process this is nothing but whatever the synthetic glycerol production process just now we have seen. Uh, from propylene via allyl alcohol uh, via acrolein uh, reactions or acrolein process. In that process also we have seen that acetone is being formed as one of the co-product. Then oxidation of butane is one other option, oxidation of propylene vacuum process is also one option and then fermentation of molasses is also one option to get acetone. However, we discuss catalytic dehydrogenation of isopropanol process rather looking at the co-product processes. This process anyway we are going to subsequently discuss when we discuss about the you know aromatics chapter. In the aromatics chapter we will be using cumin to produce phenol in that process we can see how acetone is also being produced. Okay? This we have already seen. Okay? remaining processes we cannot control or of them, so we are not discussing them. So, acetone production by catalytic dehydrogenation of isopropanol, chemical reaction simply you take uh, isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol and do the dehydrogenation using the catalyst then you can get acetone. Right? Since you are doing dehydrogenation hydrogen would be there. Other option is that you take isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol and do the oxidation using the air or oxygen then also you get the acetone as a product. Okay? So, both the options one can have in the reactor or same setup can be used for uh, uh, you know production of acetone by either of the options as I will be discussing in flow chart. Quantitative requirements basis 1 ton of acetone 99 percent pure with 90 percent yield, isopropanol 88 percent grade you required 1.3 tons and it is the only raw material required, plant capacity is 15 to 60 tons per day. If you see the uh, flow chart whatever isopropyl alcohol storage is there from that you take uh, 88 percent isopropanol then pass it through a heat exchanger to which the steam is supplied so that this IPA or isopropanol whatever is there that would be converted into the vapor phase and then compress it and then pass it through a tubular catalytic reactor. This tubular catalytic reactor is having number of tubes in a bundle form like this. These tubes are filled with the catalyst like uh, copper or brass. So, that to required reaction takes place. Right? N number of tubes may be there, they may be bundled. Okay? 
So, there would be interstitial spaces between the tubes as well so that to control the temperature of the uh, reactor for that purpose heat transfer salts are being supplied right. So, the reaction takes place at 500 degree centigrade and at 4 to 5 atmosphere. In order to get such high temperature you may also use flue gases uh, and then uh, combust them to get the required energy. So, once the temperature uh, of the uh, heated catalyst that is there in the uh, inside the tubes is reached the 500 degree centigrade then you can allow the uh, vapors of isopropanol to pass through these tubes so that the dehydrogenation of isopropanol will take place and then you get acetone plus H2 mixture right. So, this mixture you pass through water scrubber where you know whatever the hydrogen is there which cannot be scrubbed out with uh, water is collected as one of the product and then from the bottom the solution is taken to the acetone column because of uh, scrubbing with water the acetone is now diluted. So, that is taken to the acetone column which is nothing but distillation column again. The temperature pressure conditions are maintained such a way that most of the acetone uh, get uh, evaporated and then you can get it as a top product as acetone 99 percent pure acetone you can get as a top product. Bottoms would be mostly water with unreacted isopropanol if at all uh, present. So, they will be taken to the isopropanol column right. Here the temperature pressure conditions again are maintained such a way that most of the isopropanol which is uh, present uh, in the uh, water solution that would be collected as top product and then recycle back to the reactor as a recycle isopropanol. Okay. Whereas, from the bottom you get the water that water you can use as a recycle water for the water scrubber purpose. So, this is the process if you are doing the uh, direct uh, dehydrogenation of isopropanol. Let us say if you wanted to do uh, oxidation of isopropanol to get the acetone because if you do the oxidation of uh, isopropanol also then you get the acetone. For this process what you have to do? The process rest of the process is same. What you have to do here is that along with the IPA you also supply air or oxygen. If you are supplying the air let us say uh, oxidation of IPA takes place and then you get acetone plus in place of uh, H2 you get the N2 because in the air whatever oxygen is there that is consumed for the oxidation and then N2 would be there. So, that you can separate out. Uh, by water scrubbing and then you can get the N2 in place of a H2 whereas the remaining of the process is entirely same. Okay. Process description isopropanol vapor compressed to 3 atmosphere then preheated by reactor effluence heat exchange then it is passed through a tubular catalytic reactor maintained at 500 degree centigrade. Catalyst consisting of copper or brass deposited on porous carrier are used uh, in the tubular uh, catalytic reactor. Hot reaction gases pass through a water cooled condenser and then in, into a water scrubber. In the scrubber final traces of isopropanol and acetone are removed from hydrogen. Then condensate and water scrub liquor are fractioned to give product grade acetone as a overhead product and then dilute isopropanol you can get as bottoms. This isopropanol may be further fractionated to get 88 percent isopropanol which you can recycle whereas the bottoms you get the water that can be uh, recycled to water scrubber as explained in the flow chart. Coming to the major engineering problems process alternatives combined oxidation dehydrogenation process. We have seen in the flow chart primarily drawing is done for the uh, direct dehydrogenation of uh, isopropyl alcohol, but I have also explained if the oxidation process to do what are the difference. So, we can do the combined oxidation and dehydrogenation process because either of the process acetone is being produced. Other option or major engineering problem is the selection of operating pressure and then last one is the design for hydrogen at high temperature pressure. 
Under the process alternatives, mixture of air and isopropanol vapors pass through a silver catalyst. If you are doing the oxidation process, then what you have to do? You have to use a different catalyst, silver catalyst you have to use. If you are using dehydrogenation, then you have to use copper or uh, brass catalyst you have to use. Okay? So, for the oxidation required temperature is 400 to 600 degree centigrade. Then acetone is formed according to reaction CH3CHOH that is isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol plus of uh, O2 giving rise to acetone plus water. After this uh, reaction occurring in the reactor, remainder of the process is similar to dehydrogenation with N2 released from top of the scrubber rather H2 is being released from the top of the scrubber in the uh, dehydrogenation process. In the oxidation process you get N2 from the scrubber, in the dehydrogenation process you get hydrogen from the top of the scrubber. Either of the process produce uh, acetone of equivalent yields. Reaction uh, operating pressures if you see reaction is favored at low pressures, but 3 to 4 atmospheres or even 5 atmospheres are maintained to reduce the size of reactor and water circulation load for a given plant capacity. Coming to the design for hydrogen uh, at high temperature pressure, whenever hydrogen is there it is always dangerous because it is explosive and then that hydrogen at such high temperature like 500 degree centigrade and then a high pressures like 4 atmosphere etc. you need to have a uh, separate reactor so that you can handle this hydrogen properly. For that purpose it requires chrome steel uh, in reactor to avoid embrittlement problems. What happens if you use mild steel? Some kind of blistering, cracking and loss of strength of uh, pressure vessel walls may take place. So that is all about acetone production. Now we discuss production of cumin by reaction between benzene and propylene. This cumin is also known as isopropyl benzene. In fact, chemical name is isopropyl benzene, commercial name is cumin. Initially cumin was developed as a high octane addition to engine fuels as I already mentioned, but however nowadays it is primarily used for the production of uh, phenol, right? So when you produce phenol using the cumin, then you also get acetone as a co-product. First we see the properties of a cumin, then we go to the manufacturing processes. Molecular weight of cumin is 120.19, melting point minus 96.9 degree centigrade, boiling point 152.5 degree centigrade, density at 20 degree centigrade is 0 0.862, flash point is 39 degree centigrade, ignition point is 138 degree centigrade. Toxic limit concentration is 250 ppm. Now, cumin production uh, we discuss by one method that is uh, alkylation of benzene using propylene okay? or propylene alkylation of benzene to produce cumin. Chemical reaction, simple straightforward reaction between benzene and uh, propylene will give you so called cumin C6H5C3H7 which is exothermic reaction. Side reaction may also takes place where you know polycumins may form if you have n number of moles of a, you know uh, propylene reacting with the benzene. So this is what you have polyisopropyl benzene or polycumin. Quantitative requirements basis 1 ton of cumin if you want to produce more than 99.5 percent purity with 94 percent yield based on a propylene. Propylene requirement is 0.41 tons, benzene requirement is 0.76 tons. Co-products, polycumins mainly dicumin or diisopropyl benzene is produced as co-product. Plant capacities usually vary between 30 to 175 tons per day. Now, this is the flowchart that we have for the production of a cumin. Right? So here whatever the raw materials benzene and propylene are there, they are mixed along with the propane. Propane is a diluent as well as uh, quenching purpose also it is used. Why it is diluent? 
if you wanted to reduce production of polycumins, propane uh, is going to be useful. It will not allow uh, more of the polycumins forming. So, for that purpose propane is used as a diluent along with the reactants. So, this mixture of uh, propylene, propane and benzene is uh, mixed and then compressed to 25 atmosphere, then preheated by passing through a heat exchanger, then it is sent to the packed bed reactor which is staged reactor. So, the what do you mean by packed bed staged reactors? So, packing is done in stages like you know not like entire uh, column is packed with the you know packing material you have the stages like you know some portion of the you know uh, bed is uh, you know uh, confined between two uh, perforated plates and then between these plates only you are having the uh, packing material. So, like that different uh, stages of packings are possible. So, that is the reason this packed bed reactor is known as staged packed bed reactor. Okay. This reactor is maintained at 250 degree centigrade. So, that is the reaction takes place. To this reactor whatever the uh, reactant is there that is being supplied or the mixture of reactants is there that is being supplied. So, that the required reaction takes place and then you get the cumin, unreacted uh, uh, benzene, unreacted uh, propane etcetera because uh, propane is anyway here uh, uh, inert. So, all that mixture you get from the bottom that you can preheat or you can heat it and then send it to the depropanizer to recover the propane from the top. This propane you can take it you know uh, as a product or you can send it as a quench to the reactor. So, to the reactor in order to control the temperature rather using water we will be using propane quench because it is also required for as a inert within the reactant mixture so that to suppress the production of polycumins. So, that propane can also be used for the quenching purpose. Okay? So, water or steam options are also possible for this reactor to control the temperature, but that is optional anyway. So, better is to use the propane quench. Right? After removing the uh, propane from the product mixture, the mixture is primarily having cumin and an unreacted benzene. So, that mixture is taken to the benzene column. So, here this is also distillation column. The temperature, pressure, etcetera are maintained such a way that more volatile benzene, benzene is more volatile compared to the cumin. So, the more volatile benzene would be collected as the top product. Once the benzene concentration in the top trace is uh, of a high concentration or almost pure, then you can condense it and then take it back to the uh, reactant mixtures as a recycled benzene. Whereas, the uh, bottom of the benzene would be primarily having the cumins and then polycumins if at all some polycumins are forming that you can take to the cumin column and then this is also a distillation column. So, temperature pressure are maintained such a way that more volatile cumin out of the cumins and polycumins, cumin is more volatile. So, that would be collected as a top product from the top trace. Once the concentration of the cumin is uh, uh, sufficiently pure 99.5 percent or something like that, that can be condensed and then taken it as a product. Whereas, from the bottom you get the diisopropyl benzene or dicumin or polycumins you can get as a bottom products. Okay. Process description, collect propylene propane uh, feedstock from refinery off gases from a naphtha steam cracking plant and mix it with benzene. Pump this mixture into the top of a reactor packed stage wise with uh, phosphoric acid impregnated catalyst at 25 atmosphere. Maintain temperature at approximately 250 degree centigrade by adding cold propane at each stage to absorb heat of reaction. Reactor effluent depropanized and propane split into quench or product streams as per the requirement. Depropanized bottoms are separated into benzene, cumin and polycumins in the remaining two stills as shown in the flowchart and discussed accordingly. 
Coming to the major engineering problems, reactor design for a heat of reaction is one important factor, other one is the uh, you know suppression of polycumins formation. Under the reactor design for heat of reaction, stage wise packed tower with propane sensible heat quench is designed instead of using a tubular reactor with heat removal through tube walls. So, this is one important reason that we have a stage wise packed bed reactor so that you know propane can be used to uh, recover or take the sensible heat of the reaction and then control the temperature of the reaction. Steam or water injection is another method for heat removal as well. Coming to the uh, other problem of uh, polycumins formation, minimization of polycumin is possible by using high benzene to propylene feed ratio more than 5 to 1 ratio. Right? If you have one part of uh, propylene, at least 5 parts of benzene are required, then only you can minimize polycumin. Other option is that propane is uh, acting as an inert compound and dilution within the uh, reaction mixture that also minimizes the polycumin formation. Okay? So, that is all about the cumin production. The references for today's lecture are presented here. Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Strew, fifth edition. Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology by Kirk and Atmar, fourth edition. Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Grogens, fifth edition. Thank you. Thank you.